withstand the wind, the dust, the dirt of life. But you also know in the early morning when the sun comes up, it is the warmth and the light of the sun hits that outermost petal of the lotus, warms it up, so it opens up. And inside that very dirty, tough, outermost layer of the lotus, you find the first of the petals, the beautiful ones. But even the outermost one is still thick and not that fragrant. But now the outermost sheath is opened. It allows the sun, the warmth and the light of the sun to hit the next layer so that can open up. So the next one can open up. So the next one can open up. They open up layer by layer. Once one layer is opened up, the one inside can now receive the warmth and the light of the sun and that too can open up. And the deeper you go into the lotus, the more beautiful are the petals, the more fragrant and the more delicate they are. And that is a beautiful simile of the human being. Sometimes there's some very, very rough people in this world. They look rough, they look mean, but if you open them up, inside that outermost sheath, protecting themselves from the pain of life, you open them up because they trust you, they care for you. Inside you see these beautiful human beings. Many of you may have done that. You may have had a partner who's really been through hell. And you actually care for them, you love them. And little by little, slowly they open up because they trust you and they're not so afraid anymore. And you see incredible beauty inside of them. And when you do, as a lover, as a partner, as a friend, then the amazing thing is that they see that beauty inside of them as well. They see they're not just a rough, nasty, bad person who's got no hope in this world. They see something much more. <laughs> I like telling people who come on my retreats an anecdote which I only tell on retreats. That's why I'm going to tell these stories here, to actually just share these really great stories. I always mention that I make mistakes as well. This is again one of my stupid mistakes. This guy turned up to one of my retreats at Jarnakro, the opposite side of the road to Bodhinyana Monastery. But this guy was really big, really scraggly hair, and was covered with tattoos all over his body. And as soon as I looked at him, my mistake was judging him, stereotyping him. He looked like the leader of a bikey gang, not the sort of people who would come for a meditation retreat. So straight away I said, Sir, you've got the wrong place. The prison farm is up the road in that direction. <laughs> totally stereotyped. I was totally wrong. He said, No, I've joined up for the retreat. Okay, fair enough. I thought, Well, okay, all sorts. But you know, this guy, on the outside, he really looked just rough. The sort of person you'd be afraid to meet in Northbridge on a, a Saturday night, you know, just by yourself. It really, was a really mean looking guy. But he got the best meditation on that retreat. When he came to an interview to tell me what he was doing, it's incredible. The bliss and the joy and the deep meditations he was getting. And he realized this guy had opened himself up and inside was incredible beauty. And I was really admiring just his mind in his meditation. Excellent. That has shown me, like many other experiences, that everybody has that.